Hey Jets class, this is a continuation of the last video where we did some of the frequency distribution stuff. So uh, I just wanted you to see some of the other things you might see in your homework are things like class boundaries. So I could um, put that in the next column here. And the easiest way to do it is to start with your second class boundary. And the second class boundary is the average of, you just click on average, of this first upper class limit, comma, and the first or second lower class limit. So there's the first class boundary. And then, um, just like before, we add the class width. So the class width here, again, you can see was 5,000 from our example. So if I add that class width and just drag this down, this is all the class boundaries. And we want to go one bigger than this one. So 84,999. The next one would have been 85,000. So this would have been the last class boundary. We didn't need that last one. But then this one right here, we actually subtract the class width to get the lowest class boundary. And what that ends up being is this number minus the class width of 5,000. And you can see it ends up being a half unit below this. So these are the class boundaries from this. So again, I, I, in my opinion, it's easiest to start with that second boundary, which is the average of the first upper class limit and the second lower class limit and then add the class width to get the boundaries. All right, class midpoints. These are the averages of the lower and upper class limit in each class. So again, I'm going to type in average, and I'm going to click the first lower class limit, comma, the first upper class limit. All right, and just like always, when we go down with these class classes and these distributions, we add from the previous thing the class width. So again, the class width here is 5,000. And then we can drag all the way down, we need to go there, or you can, because we have a formula in this cell, the average of these two classes, I can also just drag that formula down, and it'll give me the same thing. So there are class boundaries and class midpoints. All right, and then finally, the last thing that we, I want to show you that has to do with frequency uh, distributions at all is uh, the... Um, histogram, making a histogram, which is just the visual of a frequency distribution. So I'm going to click column A here. I'm going to go up to insert a chart and I want to tell it it uh, by default wants to do a line chart. Uh, I don't want a line chart, I want a histogram, so I'm going to scroll down until I see histogram, which is down here in other. All right, it wants, right now it says use row 1 as headers and that's why it's labeling this as 50,700. It thinks that's the name of our data set. No. I don't have a header on this one, but normally I would if I if I called it that. All right, I'm going to go to Customize. I'm going to go to Histogram here, and the bucket size is the same thing as class width. That's what Sheets uses for the class width. So I'm going to tell it 50,000, and then I'm going to scroll down, or sorry, 5,000. Then I'm going to scroll down to the horizontal axis, and I want to make the minimum value my first uh, class boundary, which is that 49,9995. All right. And then once I hit enter there, now this will match up with my um, frequency column in the table. So if you look there, there's three for the first class, then there's a zero, and then there's a six, a four, a ten, and a couple ones. All right, so this is the histogram that matches with that, and it's using the class boundaries for the left and right side of each class. So this class starts here and it ends here, the next class starts, the next class starts, and so on. So there is a frequency distribution and a histogram. Um, you you want to give these things titles, and the way you do that, so they're calling this early career salaries, frequency, and salary down here. So I could come to my um, frequency chart, or my sorry, my uh, histogram. I could double click right here where it says the 50,000 number and change that to early career salaries like we saw. I could change this to salary or sorry, frequency is what it said here, sorry. And then when I get down here to the horizontal axis, I can right click it, go to chart axis and titles, and then horizontal axis title, and call it the salary. And now it looks somewhat like what we saw with the um, in the PowerPoint. So adding a title, adding labels to your axes are, are pretty standard things to do when you're doing a, uh, any type of chart, any type of statistical chart. All right, so there is a frequency distribution from start to finish with Google Sheets. And uh, you'll need to do this for uh, your, your weekly lab.